Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here. <clears throat> Today uh, showing you a little improvement you can make on the old school RGB mod for the N64. Now, for those that don't know, maybe you already know, there's a bunch of like really fancy, nice new RGB boards you can buy for the N64 that fix the blur and do a lot of other cool stuff. Uh, the one from Vile Tim, Tim Worthington, um, looks really great, and I plan to get one of those later. But I actually got lucky and scored this uh, really uh, cheap. This actually was given to me, so free. It's best kind of cheap. And uh, it was kind of messed up, so I had to recap it. And it turned out this was a 1997 board. You can see there it says 97. It's an NUS CPU-04. And the serial number and everything, uh, let's see, the serial number is NS142 blah blah blah, and it's an NUS-001. Um, I think I remember from reading online that this was not a version that was supposed to have the old RGB chip, but lo and behold it does right there. It's the VDC-NUS, which is really just Nintendo's name for it. Um, it's actually made by ROHM, ROM. And let's turn it around here. It reads BU9801F. BU9801F. And it's uh, this chip right here. It's an SOIC, uh, is it a 24 pin package? Yes, yeah, 24 pin package. It's basically a. Um, it's a DAC, so it takes the digital audio signals, which you can see coming from... Let's get my tweezers out. Sorry for the wonky camera. So these signals right here, it collects from the GPU and converts them into RGB and sync. Uh, sync actually might come from the GPU, but I don't know for sure because there's no pinout available of this chip. No one's been able to source a data sheet. But basically, it, it creates analog RGB and it sends it to this chip to encode the video and that chip is the gosh what does it say ENG-NUS I guess which is another custom chip um, there's information online for what kind of chip that is on the Game SX forums I forgot it's another ROM chip um, BA78 or something like that anyway it's a it's a video encoder and yeah, it's uh, that encodes it for S video and composite video. So all of guides online say you know you tap your RGB from pins 21 and uh, 19 and 17. Those are your blue, green, and red respectively, and you feed them to the, the AV jack, right, or whatever your RGB pluggers you're going to use. Uh, what they also say, and um, I found an improvement on, is how to get C-Sync. So if you're using SCART, right, SCART just pulls the synchronization signal from composite video or from Luma, which is labeled Y on the other side of this jack. So you're good to go. So you have SCART, you don't have to worry about this. If you're like me though, and you want an actual clean C-Sync signal, um, and you're using a VGA style mod, which is what I'm doing, I'm using a, a D-Sub, HD D sub 15, you know, VGA style jack for my RGB setup, which is what all my stuff uses, is modded to use. I want actual C Sync, TTL C Sync. And so, mistakenly, I kind of followed the guides around and they all just say, oh, get C Sync using an LM1881 or similar. This is an EL1883 and just pull it from the composite or the luminance signal. So I did that and yes, it works. True. But it's a bunch of extra work that actually turns out to be completely unnecessary. And the reason why I didn't want to do that is because once you do that, your C-Sync, your uh, S-Video or your composite video, whichever you chose to pull the signal from, is no longer going to work because you're stripping the sync signal out of it. And I kind of wanted to have this as a test setup so I could have switch between the different video signals and show people the quality of the upgrade with RGB. So, I kind of did a little bit of uh, reverse engineering here. This was actually before I had the data sheet. And I figured out exactly what's going on. Now, I have all this Kaplan tape all over the place. This is thermal resistant tape. It's great little stuff. So, it's a little hard to see, but I'll do my best at... Uh, let's pull some of it off here, and I can maybe show you a little bit of what's going on under the hood and what's being traced out. So, if you have the... NUS-CPU-04, then you definitely do not have C-Sync on your pin 3 at the AV jack, which is right here. 
Earlier models do have C-Sync, um, according to RetroRGB, and I, I believe them. Uh, they're probably correct about that. Um, but what they don't really talk about is how and why that is. So that's what I kind of set out to investigate. And how it works is pin 3, it just kind of reversed, you know, traced it. Pin 3 goes to C22. Uh, there's a capacitor there you can see is no longer populated. If that capacitor is populated, odds are you have C-Sync. Um, but there's, here's the other way to check. So that goes to C22, and then there's two resistors. Um, looks like they're labeled R1 and R14, respectively, down here. So those two resistors. And then there's this uh, via right here above R1. And from... Oh, that via is actually ground, so it's this, this via right here, the one that's circled. So from that via, the signal jumps across on the other side of the board over here by Q1. Q1 is an unpopulated transistor and also has two other resistors, R16 and R15, which are unpopulated. So to get your C-Sync signal, listen up folks, it's this via right here. This circled via right above R16 where the red wire is going. That is C-Sync. You can just pull C-Sync directly from there. You don't have to build this chip at all. It's a nice clean C-Sync. I'll show you in a minute that it works. Um, that's wired up to my connector. The other way you can tell is, so I did actually end up looking up the data sheet after the fact, and I knew that it would probably need to go to that video encoder. Um, this chip, the ENG NUS, because it's making, you know, it's encoding the video and you need sync to do that. So I, mean, I figured, you know, this chip's probably going to, you know, send it there. So I traced it out and it's this via right here is the one I soldered to, the one I was talking about above R16. And it goes to this pin right here. What pin is that? 12, 13, 14, 15, I believe that is. Pin 15. Um, and pin, do I have that right? Hmm. Okay, it might not be pin 15. I'm trying to look at the traces here. But it definitely goes to... Uh, okay, it's, it's pin 14, I believe, if I'm looking really close here at the traces. I don't have my magnifying glass. I'm getting old, man. My eyes are failing me. So yeah, I think it's pin 14, actually. Anyway, it's the trace right here that goes to this third pin from the bottom, which is pin 5. So the ENG NUS pin 5, according to the data sheet, and according to my reverse engineering, is actually a sync signal. And so what's going on here is this outputs the sync, um, presumably from the DAC, you know, outputs sync. Uh, this collects it to make your composite and S video, and then it also splits it off through this via to those other parts on the back, and then those other parts on the back feed it to your output jack. Uh, and so earlier models included that because for whatever reason, maybe the PAL boards actually did have. Um, some necessity for that for the SCART layout. I don't even know, man. Uh, maybe maybe it was a mistake at the factory and they were planning on adding RGB support and then decided to only go with C-Sync and not RGB, which is kind of weird. Who knows? But those uh, those chips, uh, those parts are, are understandably not populated on these later revisions because there's no use for them for Nintendo's purposes. There's absolutely no use for them. And um, as far as the transistor goes, the Q1 that's on the other side, not entirely sure what that's for. Um, I'm guessing that uh, the sync signal is maybe amplified or inverted in some way, but I don't see why it would need to be. Um, most C-sync signals are TTL logic level. Uh, this one's actually, I think, a, a little bit lower than, than TTL, um, but it's, you know, it's sync. It's just uh, high and low pulses, so it shouldn't need amplification. Uh, so I'm not sure what Q1 is all about, but regardless, you don't need Q1. Um, if you look up the data sheet for this part, um, again, it's on a Game SX thread. Uh, that does have C-Sync labeled as the input, and I wired it up, and it works great. And I will show you that right now, if you bear with me. I'm going to go over here and put this back in the board for testing. Um, so, yeah, also a little note on the recap here. Um, these were all 68 microfarads, these big ones, and I had a problem with the audio, so I went ahead and replaced these two 10 microfarads, which were on the output. But all of these were, were 68 microfarads, and they all seem to be for power supply decoupling. Um, and 
so you can put bigger ones like these ones over here obviously power supply to coupling since that's obviously a v-reg voltage regulator so i actually went ahead and put 220 microfarads and i didn't feel like sourcing or dealing with uh these electrolytic uh package types um they're kind of a pain to uninstall a little bit of a pain to reinstall as well i don't like it's much easier to solder the the, uh, the regular package type so um yeah i just bought some some of these radial through holes and put them in there these are 200 20 microfarads, which is bigger, um, should be better power supply bypassing. Maybe you'll even get like less interference, or I don't know if you have any problems with that. Really shouldn't matter. But if they go into a failure state, it's probably nicer to have higher capacitance anyway if the ESR changes over time, which it does with those. So yeah, more 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 capacitance on power supply rails isn't going to hurt. It's probably going to help. That's why I did it. So just to show you though, it fits on neatly. There's plenty of uh, it's a good amount of room here. You don't have to do those really small ones, um, those surface mount type ones, if you put uh, the others on their side. So let's go ahead and move this up, see what happens. Usually it takes a second here. Yeah, there you go. You got synced perfectly. And so that's that's not coming from the EL1883. That's coming from that red wire that I showed you. And uh, it looks great here on my janky PS1 test screen that I've used forever. So, um, yeah, that's a nice little way you can make your mod a little bit easier if you do decide to go with the cheapo RGB version without buying a board. I do recommend those boards though if you can afford it and you have the means. Um, they look awesome so I haven't tried them yet but I've looked at some of the videos and I know Vile Tim's work is top-notch. He's helped me out a lot over the years. Really nice guy and so yeah definitely get that board. I'm not selling anything so you know <laughs> nothing you can get from me except watching my videos and uh, laughing at my janky equipment. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's all I can say. N64, you know, not my favorite console, but I got it for free, so I might as well hack it. Uh, check out Sin and Punishment. That is a great game. Much better than Mario Kart 64. Hipsters love Mario Kart 64. Get over it, hipsters. Play other stuff. There's other good games. Sin and Punishment's fantastic. I used to love Mario Golf back in the day. Um, I have to give that one a try again. And uh, what else is good on this system? I don't know. Not a huge fan of this system. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of great stuff. I like Bomber N64. It was all right. Anyway, now I'm rambling. Have fun hacking, folks. Play some N64 and RGB. It's great. Uh, this is Sega Sonic fan signing out.